What's up, everybody? Welcome to Move the Sticks, the workshop series presented by Lowe's. And, uh, Buck, we've done this with a few teams, uh, most notably teams with young quarterbacks, rookie quarterbacks, and what that foundation looks like for them. Uh, we're going to do it with the New England Patriots today, um, looking at a team that has decided to give Drake May his opportunity here, uh, maybe a little earlier than we all thought, but uh, uh, we're going to get into what he's getting himself into here with the New England Patriots. How you doing, man? Man, I'm doing okay. Uh, these series are always interesting when we take a team, put them in the workshop, kind of do a deep dive on who they are, what they're about, and how they can get this team up and going. So I'm excited to take a look at the Patriots today. Um, I'm going to start on the offensive side of the ball and and what we've seen thus far this year. And I've watched some uh, some cut-ups on this as well as, as dug into some numbers. So it's not pretty. I'm going to give you some of the numbers here, Buck, and then we can kind of get into, you know, the roster and, and where they are at this point in time. But um, this is a team right now. First of all, they're sitting one and four. They're last place in the AFC East um, coming off of a year where they were four and 13, uh, a last place finish in the AFC East so far this year. Offensively, let's focus there. 250 total yards per game. That's 31st in the league. They're averaging 12.4 four points per game on offense that's also 31st in the league they're averaging 119.4 passing yards per game on offense that is last in the league now we get into some of the other numbers uh which i dug into pressure percentage so percentage of, of pass plays where there's pressure 48.9 percent which is dead last in the nfl how about the number of times or the percentage of times and dropbacks where the quarterback's been knocked down 18.1%, dead last in the NFL. Explosive pass plays, they've got 15, which puts them at 31st in the NFL. The only team that's behind them is the Chargers, and the Chargers have only played four games. So they, they have not played a, the same amount of games. <laughs> they're a game behind them. Yards after contact, they're 30th. The two teams behind them, Tennessee and the Chargers, both have only played four games. So you could make a very strong argument. They are worst in the league at protecting their quarterback. Their quarterback gets knocked down more than anybody else in the league. They're the least explosive offense in the league, and they have the least uh, amount of production after the catch to aid a young quarterback. Not a great situation is what I'm getting at that Drake May is getting ready to get into. No, not a great situation. I'm sure we'll dig into the personnel around him. Uh, most quarterbacks are dependent upon the playmakers that they have around them, whether it's the offensive line as a group, whether it's who do we have to throw to, do I have a number one, a number two, a number three receiver? What kind of running game do we have behind me so I can take, um, not have to take on all of the load or all of the burden of carrying this offense? And when you look at the Patriots on paper, they simply don't have enough to support a young quarterback. Yes, he can get his game experience. He can kind of figure out a little bit by trial, by error. But this is not in an ideal situation to put a young quarterback into because you could be setting him up to really deal with some I would say this like trauma that plagues and hangs with them for the next few years if they don't handle it the right way. Yeah, I mean, the uh, the positive, if we want to find a positive on the offensive side of the ball, is that when you look at what they do running the ball, uh, they have had a little bit of success there, more so throwing the ball, obviously. Um, but when you look at where they are, uh, kind of more middle of the pack, um, they're actually their eighth, their eighth in explosive runs, and that's in four games. Um, so that's that's something you can take away. Um, we'll get into the personnel here in terms of, I, I don't really see a ton of building blocks. Um, you know, I, I do like what they did with Jalen Polk, the rookie coming in, in this last draft class, they've played a couple rookie offensive linemen this year and Caden Wallace and Layden Robinson. I haven't been overly uh, impressed with what I've seen there. Um, I don't know. There's building blocks amongst that group from last year's draft class. Um, look at the rest of their, uh, the rest of their roster. I mean, they paid Ramondre Stevenson, which I like. He's a good player. He got a good back there. Um, uh, that's uh, that's something you can build around. I mean, they've got some complementary pieces at receiver. I I, I don't see a, a true one there um, when we're just kind of focusing on the offensive side of the ball. Defensive side of the ball, they've got more pieces. Uh, obviously, you start with Christian Gonzalez, the corner position. I uh, really love him and what he brings to the table. Keon White, we've seen from him uh, early this year, some, some things he can do that get you excited. But overall, I would say, you know, talent wise, there is this is not a one year, you know, prospect of them getting this thing turned around. This is multiple, multiple years it's going to take to figure that out. And with Drake May getting dumped into this, 
I'm curious to see how they how they want to handle it. You know, you've got to run the ball. You've got to play great defense. And I mean, I would guess I would say, you know, the screen game, um, try and max protect when you want to take your shots down the field. They just they can't just drop him back and set him up in the pocket. He's going to get his head knocked off. You just can't do that. No, you can't do it. And, you know, one of the things that your Alex Van Pels does is he goes and he looks at some North Carolina tape and he takes a mix of what the things he did really well at North Carolina, feature those things early in the game plan prominently. Then would you want to go back and look at what he did during the preseason? What successes did he have in practice and games that he feels comfortable with? <clears throat> at the end of the day, you're Alex Van Pelt. You need to go to Jake to Drake May and make this a, a cooperation. This is not a dictatorship where you're going to dictate to the quarterback what works. You need to be hand in hand and lockstep with the quarterback to make sure the plays that you call, he sees them correctly and he's able to at least figure out who the primary and the secondary targets are to make sure that those guys get the ball. Yeah. Um, I, I think you're right in terms of going back and seeing what they did at Carolina. I, I mean, well, let me ask you this, because I could make a case, if you're trying to win games, right, which we all should be trying to win games, mm -hmm. I would say Drake May as a runner is uh, is something that can help you in that regard for a team that's a little challenged talent-wise. He can be a little bit of an equalizer mm -hmm. on some, some quarterback run stuff. He did that at Carolina. He's a big, strong guy. But then you also have the – the fear of man, I don't want to get this guy beat up. He's going to take enough punishment, just drop him back. Like, do I really want to run him a bunch? But where do you come down on that with his situation? Uh, I think for Drake, man, you have to play him the way that best suits his skill set. I think it's a real conversation with him. What do you like? What gets you going? And you may find that he likes to run early in the game to kind of get the juices flowing. Then he settles in and becomes a, a better passer later in the game. I want to run his favorite concept, DJ. I want to run him over and over and over again. And if I, as a coordinator, have to change the motion, shift to it, burst to it, redirect to it, swap to it, we're going to do everything but allow him to run his five, his five favorite plays because I want him to have enough confidence that he lets it go. If I'm going to play him, I want to make sure we utilize him the right way so that he can become a better player in 2025 based on the experiences from 2024. Yeah, um, I think that's going to be key, is that they get on the same page there and uh, what they're looking for and what they want from him. They've uh, man, they've just got to do a better job of protecting him. They've got to find a way to manufacture some more explosive plays, keep running the, running the football a bunch. I mean, they've had two winnable games so far uh, mm -hmm. to go along with the one that they won. So you could look at it and say, okay, well, this, you know, they've been competitive uh, outside of the, uh, the two blowout losses, but – you're going to have rookie boo-boos too. I mean, you're just going to have mistakes that he's going to make just as he's continuing to grow. You know, he played a mm -hmm. ton. So you're going to have that normal process there. I, I, I'm i torn on this one. Normally I try and have a, a strong opinion on, on things, but I mean, it's two-parter, right? Is he the best option for us? <laughs> yes. Is this the right thing for him at this point in time? TBD. Yeah. <clears throat> It's a really difficult situation, right? Because you're the Patriots. You got a bunch of veterans in there that want to win. They're looking around. They see practice every day. They see what Drake May brings to the table in terms of his arm talent, his athleticism. And you have some receivers who might be frustrated that the ball hasn't gone their way. For whatever reason, Jacoby Brissett cannot get the ball to him. He's under pressure. Whatever it is, you got some guys that are upset who are asking, hey, man, let's just bring the young guy. What, what are we doing? A difficult situation to manage, but if you derive mail, man, you almost have to listen to the locker room and just get a sense and a vibe of, are they still rocking with Jacoby Brissett or do I need to go ahead and rip the bandit off and put Drake May in there? Because once I put him in there, to me, that's a season-long decision. You can't yo-yo Drake May once you put him in. When he's in, he's the starter, unless there's an injury or something. He, he has to get all the reps, all of it. And no matter what our record looks like, we got to be able to go down with him saying, hey, we're going to get him better this year. Yeah, no, I, I I think that's fair. They've got some guys that they're missing, too, on the defensive side of the ball that make a big difference when they're back. So, um, you know, I defensively, this roster is not in terrible shape. I talked about their pass rush, they're 24th in pressure percentage, so that's not great. Um, but there are pieces there, and, uh, you know, if you get Barmore out there healthy, uh, when he's out there, that makes a major, major difference. So, uh, I mean, I think they're, 
they're kind of built to, to try and win these squeaker games, low scoring games, um, field goals, punts, you mm-hmm. know, that's kind of their, that's kind of how they're built. It's not the most aesthetically pleasing, um, but they can be, I guess they can be competitive. I just, it's such an Achilles heel and such a weakness with the offensive line. That's just, it's hard to have a great offense with a terrible offensive line, man. It just is. I don't know. I don't know of one that exists. Yeah. When we talk about great, there's not a great offense that doesn't have a, 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 a great offensive line. You have to have those guys in the trenches to be able to do it. And when I look at the Patriots, they haven't been able to solve uh, those issues. The other part they haven't solved is they don't have a true pecking order on the outside. <clears throat> it was great back in the day when they were playing with David Patton and David Givens and Troy Brown and a bunch of guys that were unheralded, but the quarterback could elevate them. We didn't know it yet, but Tom Brady could elevate um, – nondescript uh, players around him. Right now, to think that Drake May is going to elevate pass catchers is look, it's, it's too premature to think that, hey, he, he can get it done now. And who are the guys that we can do it? DJ, when you look at their their depth chart and you look at it, look, I like Jalen Polk, Kendrick Bourne is questionable, Demario Douglas, KJ Osborne, Keishon Bouti, Taquan Thornton. DJ did of those six that we're talking about, there's no one, there's no one that that gives you the EBGBs if you're on defense. There's no one that if I am reading the advanced scouting report to the defensive coordinator, he's like, who do we need to double team? Because yeah. it always starts like that. Who's the guy that we need to double team? Do we need to lean coverage anywhere? Nowhere. When you hear that lineup, I mean, if anything, you're encouraged to go, hey, let's go man for you. Let's lock them up. We're going to press them. We're going to drop another guy in the box. So now that Drake may cannot lean on the running game, and we're going to make him make tight window throws because we're not only going to play man to man, we're going to play bump and run and yeah. dare them to beat us. And so now the windows are tight, and you're just asking for, I would say, a hard day's work for Drake May. They have two pass plays over 25 yards this year. One was to the running back, Antonio Gibson. One was to the tight end and Hunter Henry. They do not have a wide receiver with a catch. I think their longest catch is 20, let me see, 21, 22 yards. Uh, it is DeMario Douglas has a 22-yard catch. That's the longest reception they have from a wide receiver through five games. Okay, imagine that, DJ. Imagine coming into the office like we talk about on, on Monday nights when you do the presentation for the coaches. Yeah. Here's, here's their team. <clears throat> you ran through all the offensive stats. A 31st year, last year, did, 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 the average, they only have 15 explosive plays. Uh, the first thing that the coach says, hey, man, who are the guys? Who do we have to worry about on offense? Okay, Ramondre Stevenson. Okay, we'll lock yeah. him up. We'll put other guys in the box. Who's next? There's no one else that commands special attention. That's why our expectations for what Drake May's going to do, they need to be tempered because he doesn't have enough around him to really maximize his skill set. Well, if you think about explosive plays, they require two things. They require separation and they require time. And mm-hmm. I don't know that they have either, you know, at this point in time on the roster, which uh, let's take a quick break because I want to come back and get to where do we go from here? I won't be all doom and gloom with the Patriots. I am excited to see Drake, see what he does. Uh, but we'll talk about what the priority should be going forward right after this. All right, Buck. Um, I, again, good, they have some good pieces on defense. Um, so excited about that. Uh, at the different levels of their defense. But if we're going to just – let's spin it way forward. I know we're – shoot, we're early in the year here. But if we're going to spin it way forward, priority one, two, three for you next year would be what? Oh, we're going we're gonna to camp out on the offensive and defensive lines, but primarily the offensive line. We're going to make sure – before we can even think about giving Drake May a weapon, we got to make sure that the fortress protects the king. He has enough big bodies, athletic bodies in front of him to know that he's protected, that he understands that I'm not going to get hit. I can take the drop. I can trust my process when it comes to develop, to, to reading the progression, and then I'm going to let it go. And we, can, we can't do any of that until we make sure that the offensive line is solidified. Last year, their top five picks were all on the offensive side of the ball. So you went Drake May, Jalen Polk receiver, Caden Wallace tackle, Layden Robinson guard, Javon Baker wide receiver. So first five picks. And then they literally just took a corner in the sixth round and came back with a quarterback and a tight end. So seven of their eight picks were on the offensive side of the ball. They're going to have to repeat it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how much impact they're going to get from that group. 
they're going to have to they got to go swinging again they've got to go on the on the offensive side of the ball they're going to have to take two of their first four picks going to have to be offensive linemen you're going to have to just keep dumping resources into that from the draft as well as in free agency and tell the defense we've got a great scheme we've got a great history and tradition here we have some building block pieces but y'all are on your own man like we got to we have to address the offensive side of the ball in the future yeah they have to do it man i'm looking at this line of dj and Man, some of these names that we're talking about, when we think about left tackle, Bedarian Lowe, Michael Jordan at left guard, Nick Leverett at center, Mike, and then at, at right the guard. Okay, he's okay. He's their best guy. Like, like That's it. Demontre Jacobs at right tackle. Not good. I, I mean, it, it's not great. And you talk about them dedicating, what, five – picks in the early rounds to offensive yeah, players. first five picks yeah in the first four rounds i mean we have to get better and dj like if we go to the perimeter players like they're okay but they're not world beaters and so what you have is a team of I don't know, what i would say like the collectively it looks like beige paint right there's nothing that excites yeah. you about it now it works but everything has to be working together the defense got to play at a high level special teams have to dominate to make sure that they're flipping the fields or they're creating short fields. And then the offense has to punch in the scoring opportunities set up by the two other phases. That's kind of the only way the Patriots are going to be able to win. Other teams have to give them opportunities to score on short fields. Otherwise, it's too hard for them to drive the length of the field. And I, I also think with going to Drake early in this uh, in this season, earlier than we maybe thought that they would, I think not only an audition for him, but I also think the audition for the entire offensive staff of how do they build around him? How do they game plan around him? Because Drake May's not going anywhere after this year. Uh, but this, I mean, it's that's just what it is in the NFL right now. You don't get a long leash as a coach, especially as a position coach, as a coordinator. They have to see can they can they prove to us they can make some some lemonade out of some lemons that we've got here on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, because if not, you have to find somebody here that can come cradle and 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 coddle and take care of a young quarterback. Uh, that's that's an evaluation I think that's taking place not just on the field but uh, on the coaching side of things. One hundred percent. And when you think about like that part of it, you're right. This team is going to evolve. So you got to meet him halfway. You got to figure out a way up to partner up. You have to meet him in the film room and find some concepts that 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 work with him. When you talk about like Drake May and doing that stuff over and over and over again, let's make sure that he is very, very comfortable doing exactly what we want him to do. And then when it comes to the OC, I need to see him getting his back. I need to see him be able to get to the college game and pull up some of that tape and find some concepts that work for a young player. DJ, otherwise, it's, it's never going to work. And no question. Yeah, Buck, it's uh, it's going to be interesting to evaluate everybody here. Everybody gets to evaluate as we go through the season. I am excited to see Drake. I hope they move the pocket. I hope they screen him. I hope they max protect when they want to take shots. There's a lot of things you got to do here to uh, to get him off on the right foot. But he is very talented. I'm always a big fan of his, his game and his upside coming out. I think it does provide some hope. But um, there's a lot of work. There's still a lot of work to be done when you're thinking about building this roster. <clears throat> so much work to, to be done. And so that's when people talk about the luxury item and can it get in on certain trades and those things. I think you got to build it from scratch. And everyone in the building has to have a two or three year timetable on what it's going to take to get the weapons around him to allow him to flourish. Uh, you hope he doesn't lose confidence. You hope that he's able to learn from his mistakes in these games and come away a better player down the line. But it's always a risk when you play a young player this early. Yep, uh, no doubt. Well, this was a fun one. Uh, it's always it's always enjoyable. You kind of look at what these guys have around them. They get judged individually, but I think it's important to provide context of uh, of what these guys are getting put into. Um, so, uh, if you missed the earlier ones, by the way, we did uh, previous episodes on the Commanders and the Chicago Bears on uh, on their rosters and how they're set up to help their young quarterbacks who are really playing well uh, right now. When you look at the job. Jane Daniels has done from the jump and what we've seen from Caleb Williams over the last few weeks. So uh, kudos to those organizations. Now that New England Patriots, uh, we'll see what they have in terms of uh, surrounding and supporting a rookie quarterback. Appreciate you guys hanging with us. This has been Move the Sticks, the workshop series presented by Lowe's.